This week we travel west to Canastota. Canastota was settled in 1810 and evolved into a thriving canal town. Many Victorian style homes from that era can be seen today. The library also has beautiful architecture and is on the National Register of Historic Places. Andrew Carnegie, well let me back up for a second. The proper pronunciation of his name based on where he was born is Andrew Carnegie. Has a very intimate connection to the library here because he donated $10,000 to make it possible to build this beautiful edifice. As a matter of fact, he contributed money throughout the country. I believe that there were some 1,600 libraries built because of him in the United States and then another 800 around the world. So the man really was an intimate, intimate part of our literary history and we can thank him for this wonderful structure. When you come in, take a look at the windows because at the top of the windows there is a design that is very unique to the Carnegie, Carnegie libraries. It's a, an X. Uh, just make it a point when you come in to, to look up. Uh, the building was started in October of 1902. The architect came from New York City. His name was Archimedes Russell, and he was a very well-known architect at that time and did some popular buildings in Syracuse. And the library itself opened on August 11th, 1903, and they had a big celebration at that time. We have a newspaper clipping that talks about the people that came and what they were wearing and how many books were in the library at that time. Well, we try to have something for everybody. We really consider ourselves to be a community center. So we have art exhibits each month showcasing local artists. We bring music into the library. We have two writing groups that meet here at the library. We do a lot of things with children. We have baby lapsit and story time and music and movement things. And it's always changing. We are, we're bringing authors in whenever we can. Uh, we try to showcase things that are happening locally. We try to meet the needs of our community community members, and, and that's really fun to do. Upstairs in the archives, we meet local historian David Sadler, who tells us the town's name has a Native American origin. The name of Canistota is Canistota. It's spelled K-I-N-S-T-E, a hyphen, S-T-O-T-A. And uh, it, it resulted from two pine trees uh, near James Street, and another one was uh, leaning into the other two and uh, that's how they got the name, and the actual name means Cluster of Pines Near Still Waters. This Thursday night at 7 at the library, author Norman K. Dan will discuss the history of the Underground Railroad and his book, When We Get to Heaven, Runaway Slaves on the Road to Peterborough. In East LA and I'm searching for my soul I think I head on back to New York and the people that If you get caught speeding or racing through Canastota, you'll be coming to court here on Peterborough Street. It's right behind me. Notice the sign out front because uh, the, the, the first and the only auto race around the entire world uh, ties into Canastota history because they stopped here and spent the night. Do you know who won the race? The United States won the race. And do you know what kind of car they were driving? It was a 1907 Thomas Flyer runabout. So you don't have any dough, you don't even have pockets, but you got your baby around your neck and a locket, oh. uh -huh. Be sure to travel along Canal Street. The buildings that overlook the remnants of the original Erie Canal make it easy to imagine the early days of this canal town. In one of Canastota's oldest structures is the Canal Town Museum. It is considered to be one of New York State's finest small town museums, where folklore and history are brought to life. This place was actually on a canal. In the 1870s, this was a, uh, bater, a bakery. And uh, we're only, you know, just a few feet away from the canal, which is right across the street. Some of the great things that happened here, the first American-made microscopes were made right here in Canastota uh, by Charles Spencer, okay, and became very famous throughout the world. He was able to sell these things throughout the world, right up the street here. And another famous, we have some famous paintings here by, uh, by his brother, okay, Frederick R. Spencer. And those paintings, some of, those, some of his paintings are even in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, let alone the Munson William Proctor Institute. All right, some other great things that happened here is the... Uh, 
the movie industry, we like to say, helped get its start here in Canastota because of the mutoscope and because of the biograph machine. And the American Biograph Company started right here in Canastota. And they employed such people as D.W. Griffiths and uh, those kinds of people right there. We also produced cut glass that was here, and it's uh, ideal cut glass. And we have a collection of that, and we also have catalogs for people to look up and things. And the Watson Wagon, which contributed to winning World War I because it was a bottom dump wagon that built roads and so forth. And we sent 15,000 of those to, um, to the Allied forces. And, and all here from Canstone, right? Yeah, but there's a lot more. Oh, so I it, it just goes on and on and on and on. When I go through museums, I make notes as I'm walking through. Well, my notes here, they just kept going, as you can see, on and on. And I ran out of space. There are so many things in this museum to come to see. A few of the things that caught my eye, though, are the mutoscope reel. That became the uh, uh, things that you would see in the Penny Arcade at Sylvan Beach, remember? You put a penny in and you'd do this with the reel and you'd see a movie that was coming off of cards. That came from Canastota. Another thing is this time of the year, I can remember going down into our cellar where my mother kept all of her canned goods and I'd be bringing out uh, some of the jams and the jellies that she made and that we would get through the winter with. Well, she always used Serto. And Serto is that liquid fruit pectin for homemade jams and jellies. And it started right here in Canastota. After taking our tour and talking to Joe, we couldn't help but believe that everything started here in Canastota. That world race, for example, uh, it came through Canastota, but it would not have happened were it not for the weed tire chain. And uh, guess what? Do you know where the weed tire chain was manufactured? You've got it right here in Canastota. The museum is closed for the winter, but groups interested in a tour are encouraged to call 697-5002. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, the museum is hosting a canal side talk about the history of the Boxing Hall of Fame.